today on Context, Giving Tuesday, how to use your wallet and your time to change the world this holiday season. First came Black Friday, then Cyber Monday, days when visions of dollar signs and stuff dance in millions of heads. Now buckle up and brace for a new player, Giving Tuesday, an initiative designed to launch the giving season, designed to do for the community what mega shopping days do for the economy. Giving Tuesday is really a day where you think about how you contribute and give back to the community. Coming up, Lorna sits down with a think tank CEO who explains why giving is a spiritual act. Up first, are North Americans ready for a seasonal shift from get to give? The first sign of the Christmas season is seldom a gentle snowfall. It's a marketing blizzard. Instead of good tidings, we get a tidal wave of advertising. And we deck the halls with stacks of flyers. Retailers are struggling to finish the year in the black instead of the red, and so are cash-strapped families. So, for some perspective on holiday spending, here are some fast facts with Sheldon Neal. That's right, Lorna. November is the new black. Black Friday, that is. November now is much bigger on the retail calendar thanks to Black Friday and cyber sales. Cyber Monday, that is. Collier's International reports that November accounts for nearly 9% of retail sales in Canada each year, up from 8% a decade ago. Meanwhile, the bu busiest buying season is actually all online. In fact, online spending grew by nearly 55% last year, according to Canada's largest credit and debit card processor. And that suggests a continued shift away from in-store buying. Our first guest helps nearly one million Canadians click and give to their favorite charity. Marina Glogovats is the CEO of Canada Helps. Please welcome her to Context. Hi, Marina. Thank you for coming. Wow. I, um, I was very surprised to see Sheldon's Fast Facts that online spending has grown like it has. Give us an idea of the impact of Cyber uh, Monday, Black Friday. Right. Um, I don't have the exact numbers for Canada. I know that in the States is in the billions of dollars. It's about $5 billion only online. 55% so, increase yeah. in Canada. Yeah. It's, it's like, huge, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you're trying to jump on this and say Giving yeah. Tuesday needs yeah. to happen. What exactly yeah. is Giving Tuesday going to be? Giving Tuesday is the day to give back after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So this year it will happen on December the 2nd. It really, it came from the States. So it was originally launched by the United Nations Foundation out of New York. And this will be the third year that it's in the States. It's also in 43 other countries. So it's actually become an international day to give back and to, to recognize the importance of giving back, whether it's uh, donations, whether it's engagement, whether it's volunteering, whether it's just spreading the word about the importance of giving and sharing. Okay, and there are a lot of big names that are really trying to change yeah, yeah. a culture shift here on this. Uh, in the States, as you mentioned, you've yeah. got a lot of high-profile people involved, yeah. from Bill Gates yeah, to fashion huge. model Heidi Klum, yeah. and the White House is yeah. involved. What's happening in Canada? So the Canadian uh, Giving Tuesday was launched last year. Um, we immediately had about 1,500 partners. Um, some, uh, lots of companies came on board as well, like CIBC, Canadian Tire, PayPal, Interact, um, you know, some other ones, a lot of charities. People got involved. We actually got uh, quite a big exposure and a lot of people, I mean, social media was on fire on that okay, day and, and around it. Okay, and you've talked us into yeah, getting on yeah, board. Okay, so yeah, we're going to put up yeah, our website yeah, here and yeah. we're going to walk us through yeah, yeah. how, when you go into the Context yeah. website, do you get involved in Giving yeah. Tuesday? Right. There's so many ways that people can really get involved in Giving Tuesday. It really can be as simple as just committing to doing something or coming up with a you know, volunteering plan or a giving plan. It could be as simple as finding some new charities in your local area that you didn't know about. Uh, because I think small charities need a lot more help than people people recognize. Mm -hmm. um, it could be about donating to your to your the cause that you already have. 
um, uh, for charities like Context is and nonprofits, uh, they're usually uh, they they come up with different campaigns around Giving Tuesday. But people that want to donate to Context would do so on that day. Or as any act, other charity, or any you can other, go in. Any so, other so, charity. So yeah. we want to share this with yeah. everybody yeah. here That's on our right. website now, yeah. so you can get into Giving yeah. Tuesday, whatever. If yeah. you don't want to just give to Context yeah. or give to something That's your right. favorite, you yeah. you still want to see these numbers yeah. go up yeah. on this. Well, the numbers and last we year were huge. I mean, on Canada Helps, which processes online donations, the numbers for Giving Tuesday, so the donations were up 169 percent. I just want to go to the studio audience because we've got Giving. Guelph Gives Guelph is here. Gives. Giving Tuesday yeah. is really caught on in Guelph. And Lindsay, you're here from Guelph. Um, what are you guys doing for, for giving Guelph Gives? So we decided to launch um, a citywide give back campaign called Guelph Gives. So uh, we got a steering committee together to launch this huge campaign. And um, our goal is to show that Guelph is Canada's most generous city. Wow. So you're already yes. the number one in recycling. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yes. And now you want to be but the yes. number one in giving. Marina, you personally made this switch. Yeah. You went from corporate life mm. to nonprofit life. Right. I mean, so why did think, you do it? Think, why did you do it? Why did you give that way I with your career? I did it because I felt that the not-for-profit space, the territorial space, is really dynamic. It's very exciting right now. We have the blurring of the lines between profit, not-for-profit. We have the advance of B Corps, social, uh, social entrepreneurship. I thought that it was important for me to be part of the conversation that is trying to make this world a better place, that is trying to transform our entrenched economic and business model and really be on the side that encourages everybody to really look at for-profit and not-for-profit space more holistically. There's an amazing statistic, though, that 70% of Canadians are not giving. I've done a little uh, looking around in the audience. Naomi, what's your gut feeling on why Canadians, so many Canadians, aren't giving at all? Marina said something about the line blurring between the the profit and the not-for-profit worlds, and I just wonder whether there's a bit of a challenge where whether we expect something in return now when we give. I think of examples like the one-to-one -one philosophy of Tom's Shoes. I think of even World Vision. You know, you buy a gift from the catalog. It's very consumeristic, and I think we get a lot back from giving now. And I wonder whether there's a bit of a, a problem with that. Whether we need to give just to be generous. And Giving Tuesday can change that. Yeah, you've got Giving Tuesday is a good platform to bring this conversation to the fore right. of, of the national here, consciousness. Let's talk about how they get involved. Yeah. So for those of you watching at home who are interested in finding out more about Canada Helps, your yeah. organization, which yeah. helps millions of us click right. online, yeah. you can visit our website at contextwithlorna.com for more information, or you go to givingtuesday.ca right. or canadahelps.org to give to your favorite charity. Marina Glogovats, thank you. Thank you. Well, another perspective on Giving Tuesday, this one from the U.S. Michael Rosen is an author and expert on the charitable sector. He's asking some hard questions about Giving Tuesday, and he joins us from Philadelphia. Michael, you support the aims of Giving Tuesday, but you've, you're skeptical. Why? It's not the fact that the results uh, can concern me. It's the fact that we don't have sufficient data in order to draw conclusions at this point. Uh, for example, we don't know whether Giving Tuesday simply is going to shift when people give as opposed to bringing more people into the philanthropic circle. Another concern that I have is will larger organizations that have substantial budgets and staff resources to invest in Giving Tuesday promotions uh, will they simply be siphoning off support from smaller organizations that don't have the same kind of budget and staff resources to invest in Giving Tuesday? So are we going to see, uh, uh, rather than new money coming into the sector, are we going to instead see uh, a shift of where existing resources end up? And then another uh, concern that I have is that as that if Giving Tuesday is effective at bringing uh, new donors uh, into the philanthropic circle, uh, will those folks simply be coming in the front door and almost immediately leaving out the back door? 
We know in the United States, for example, that for every 100 new donors acquired, uh, 105 leave. Wow. And faith is a factor in promoting and giving to charity, but we are seeing um, religious uh, affiliation decline in both our countries. As that connection gets weaker, does charitable giving get weaker? Unfortunately, the data seems to support that uh, view. Uh, as the uh, population uh, becomes less religiously affiliated, uh, philanthropy, which correlates closely with religious affiliation, uh, also begins to decline. And in fact, in Canada, uh, we've seen this uh, with uh, uh, tax filers. In the 90s, uh, about 30 percent of tax filers claimed a charitable giving uh, deduction, uh, whereas now that has declined to 23 percent. And during that same period, we've also seen a decline in religious affiliation. So I'd have to say there's definitely an impact. Well, and it is still the 80-20 rule. Many people don't give. I was shocked at the numbers. Why do you think they should change their mind? I think most people do want to make their communities better, um, uh, make the world a better place for themselves and their, their loved ones. And the charity sector needs to be able to demonstrate for people how partnering with the charity can help achieve that aim that I think people inherently have. Uh, the greater the level of, of, of satisfaction that individuals have uh, with a charity, the greater trust they have in the charity, uh, the more likely they are to, to give. People want to know where their money is going to go, the good that it's going to achieve. Uh, they want to be updated uh, about that. They don't want the charity contacting them only with their handout. They want to know what the charity is accomplishing. And if the charity sector does a more effective job uh, at satisfying those needs of the donor, being focused on what the donor uh, uh, is looking for, then I think that will inspire uh, more people to give, more people to give more often, and more people to simply give more. Okay, author and giving expert Michael Rosen, evaluating the impact of Giving Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lorna. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Canada is a generous country, but giving levels are actually dropping, and we'll find out why next. Bye. When are mommy and daddy coming home? Can I play a game on your phone? Is spaghetti the only thing you know how to make? Do you have a boyfriend? Does he know you have hairy arms? New game. Can we have a dog show? How many bones do I have? Can you read this? Can we go to a hotel? Do we have? Yes. Why do bad things happen to good people? Click context with Lorna.com to access exclusive web resources. Do a topical search on a subject you need to know. There's blogs, articles, links, and previous episodes. Life beyond the headlines. That's context with Lorna.com. Well, behind the English word charity lies the Latin root caritas, which also means love. Charities are Canada's frontline responders to social need. And that may be why our government gives tax incentives to help us give and why Stats Canada has been tracking our giving habits for years. With more on that, Sheldon Neal with the Fast Facts. Thank you, Lorna. Well, what do we know about givers in Canada? Stats Canada says those who give the most to charity are more likely to be older, to have higher household income and formal education, and they are likely to attend a weekly religious service or meeting. The latest calculation from Statistics Canada is the average annual donation per Canadian donor amounts to $446, less than $50 a month. 
In general, charitable giving tends to be lower in Canada than in the US. Meanwhile though, those who volunteer are getting older and their numbers, well, they're shrinking. Is this core of giving Canadians an endangered species? That's a question very much on the mind of our next guest. Michael Van Pelt is the CEO of the Canadian think tank Cardis. Michael, welcome to Context. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> okay. Well, Michael, you've been always warning us that the giving trends aren't quite as rosy as I like to think they are. What do we know? Think about it from the point of view of a charity. It's pretty tough for them to go, you know what, everything's going terrible and no one's giving enough money. Um, <laughs> so they always have to present a positive view and I get that and I understand that. But let's look at the numbers. Let's kind of parse them out and define them a little bit. Some of the numbers we've seen already. So of filers, tax filers in Canada, I think it's 24% and we're dramatically pleased that it went up from 23.7%, which means that 75% of Canadian tax filers don't, don't donate. That's incredible. So look at those. 75% of people who make enough money to file an income tax That's correct. Yep. are not. And, and there's a give back when you actually do give. There's a tax incentive to give. And actually in Canada, it's, it's, it's compared to the rest of the world. It's actually a pretty substantial uh, uh, tax credit rebate uh, for Canadians to motivate Canadians. Now we've been suggesting we do, do even more of that yes, here in Canada. Yes, you think we should increase that. So what we did is we proposed an idea to say, okay, we have got a challenge with the amount of money that's being given us in, in the charitable sector. How can we, can we use some public policy tools to solve that problem? So we made two arguments. Number one, that only mitigates the problem. We have a cultural problem here, not a public policy problem. But how do we mitigate it? Number one, let's increase the charitable tax credit. And then the second thing is, can we create a regulatory environment that's a little bit more flexible for charities to work in the public square? How do you merge this kind of intensity to use business tools to generate revenue, and on the other hand, keep the integrity of what it means to, to give? Okay, so the government can't do, I was gonna say much, about motivating our behavior, but that's why we try to promote the role of the religious community, the church base in Canada. And in a previous show, I spoke with two well-known philanthropists. One, an American, Dr. Jack Templeton, and one, yeah. our Canadian, Prem Watsa. Okay. And I asked about the role of belief in God in giving. Oh, and here's what they had to say. Oh. Dr. Templeton, when does this start in your life for you? When did you learn about generosity? Dad said we will say grace before every meal, which is an expression of gratitude. Prem, when did generosity start for you? For me, uh, Lon, I was very uh, simply won the ovarian lottery. I had two <laughs> wonderful parents, and they, um, <laughs> they, <laughs> they uh, raised four children. I was uh, 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 one of the four. And uh, we were uh, brought up with a Christian background, uh, brought up with the idea of giving um, right from the time we were small. Michael, do you think there is a link between spirituality and giving? Oh, there is. There, there's definitely a link. May I illustrate it to you? You were talking earlier about the, 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 the great city who was the great giver in the country. Well, do you know who it really is? It's Abbotsford. <laughs> Uh, well, let's have a little look at the demographic nature of this, this wonderful, vibrant city in British Columbia. My mom lives there. Well, the, the, <laughs> She's very, very giving to and me. And it has a very dynamic religious community, mm -hmm. uh, community to it. I think the number is twice as much. Uh, so uh, uh, typically Canadians give, let's say, 1% of their income. In Abbotsford, it's, it's well over 2%. Well, why is that? Might it have something to do with the religious character of that community? And if it does... Well, how can we duplicate that? What kind of story can that tell? What kind of encouragement can that give the rest of the country? I'm very curious about that kind of discussion. You um, have always characterized Cardis, your think tank, as being rooted in 2,000 years of Christian tradition. What is it about the DNA in the mm. Christian faith that encourages generosity? That, that, it's a fascinating question. And I, I think it's not just in the Christian faith, but think about the Christian tradition. It's characterized by two uh, directives about how we might want to live. Number one, it says love God. And number two, it says love your neighbor. Well, how do we do that? And that really gets at the root of what charity is all about. It's a way of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. So that philosophical or kind of religious idea that really roots the 
much of the Christian tradition even in, in this country and is related to other religious traditions as well is I think the real animator to what charity can really be in the future. We lose that, then there's not much we have. Okay, but 75% of Canadians aren't giving at all, aren't volunteering according to the statistics. So how do we make that connection? What could, what could that idea, love God and love neighbor, do to help? to change. I mean, this is our social fabric we're yeah. talking about. Richard Griffith has a fascinating language for this. He calls uh, this, this, this community uh, civic slackers. Civic slackers, <laughs> I'm fascinated by that because it's this real expressive way of, of describing who, uh, uh, who we become. Think about charities and the natural communities around charities that really need to animate them. And that's where I think the possibility is. We, our postmodern society, wants to be in community. We want to build natural communities that make us sense we're together and that we have a mission together. That's, I think, the opening for us in the future, is charities, for them to be successful, for them to live out their mission and do good unto others, they need a natural community to be part of. Okay. We can be part of that natural community. Okay, from civic slacker to philanthropist of the year, we've got someone in the audience here who has the privilege of having that distinction. Um, Alice, Alice Clammers, philanthropist of the year by your community in Lincoln. Tell us the mind setting, the shift you make in your mind to say, you know, that's the road I'm going to go down. Philanthropist of the year. Well, it wasn't really a choice for me because I was raised in a faith-based family and, and it's part of my spirituality. Like Michael said, you know, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. I truly believe that I need to give back and whether that's to church or school or my community as a Rotarian or on the foundation board, I, I just feel that's where I derive a lot of satisfaction and I feel this world would be a much better place if Alan, people gave. I got to know you first as a young widow raising three sons. You were, you were not, uh, four sons, sorry, four sons. You were not in a position to be philanthropist of the year in your life. Give your advice to someone who feels like, well, that may be fine for her, but she doesn't understand how tough life can be. So it doesn't have to be huge. It's like God gives talents. We use them. He blesses you with more. I had to run a business on my own. I was able to hire people to help me with the business. I had more time, so I gave back to different boards and community endeavors. Right. It's a choice. Philanthropist of the Year, congratulations for your community of Lincoln. Yeah, Michael, how do we promote grassroots giving like that? Yeah, I, I think you still have to go back to this animating attraction to the human person about living in community. If you can attract a young generation to get outside of the atomized world of their internet, of their of their Blackberries or iPads that they use nowadays, um, and give them the invitation to be in community. I think that's the first door that so, we want to. So that here we, want we are to talking through. about Giving Tuesday, which is all online, privately. And my thing, you're not. Right. You you you. Yeah. It, you would say it, maybe not it's, a good it's a wonderful, idea. It's a wonderful idea, and we need to use every marketing tool we can yeah. uh, to, to generate this conversation. But those are mitigating efforts. We need to get at the structural, cultural dynamics about what it actually does to motivate you, Lorna Duick, to give, and Michael to give, and the rest of the community to give. And my suggestion is that us being in community is the door opening. Some people may not have the religious yeah. conviction. Well, let's find another door for them. Yeah. Think about the environmental community. You know, you yesterday or this morning went to your blue box and you dropped in your recycling in the blue box without a thought. But historically, you never did that. How did we get to that space? What kind of cultural dynamics did we create? What kind of conversations did we have to say, that's just the way we live? I'm suggesting there's a really neat door in this need for the human person to live in community, to, to be social as the way to say, you know what, let's go further than that. Let's actually think about what it means to love and what it means to have sacrifice. And then you find out that it's just way better doing all that stuff than living for yourself. That's the root. My concern is, is that when we look at charity 3.0 and some of the new ways of kind of how we ought to do charity, I don't want us to forget that root, that root saying we need to love and if you, and if you lose that, you lose the raison d'etre. Then you're doing something else. You're not doing charity. 
Well, that's a great note to end this on. That is exactly what this is all motiv motivating us about, is loving each other, making a better, caring Canada and beyond. Michael Van Pelt of Cardis, mm -hmm. CEO of Cardis, thank you very much. And thank oh, you for giving yeah. to Contest with all your great ideas. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. You. Well, Sheldon, you have a question for our viewers at home. I do indeed, and the question is this. Are you planning to take part in Giving Tuesday? And if you are, what will your act of generosity be? And if you're not, why don't you tell us? Let us know by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter, and we will respond with a big thank you. Well, up next, I'll tell you why I think Giving Tuesday is the right counterweight to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Why did we get up so early? Because it's not too hot. Is this enough? Uh huh, give me that. Do fish sleep? Do worms have belly buttons? What's the biggest number? Are there sharks in here? <laughs> when are we gonna catch one? How long is soon? When is patient over? Hey, we're gonna do some fishing, huh? How do we know for sure we're going to heaven? <laughs> Click context with Lorna.com to access exclusive web resources. Do a topical search on a subject you need to know. There's blogs, articles, links, and previous episodes. Life beyond the headlines. That's context with Lorna.com. This segment is brought to you by Bruce Etherington and Associates. Family harmony and philanthropy helping you help others. God doesn't limit giving to Tuesdays. Instead, God knew that the human race needed to be loved. And for that, God gave us the most valuable gift, Jesus. In the New Testament, Jesus talked more about money than he did about many things, including heaven, hell, or prayer. The question we need to ask ourselves is why is that? Is part of it the idea that Jesus knew money would be the primary cause of competition that people have to deal with? Our love of money competes with our ability to love God and our neighbor. It's a reminder to me how much we need a relationship with Jesus to fuel our understanding of love. It helps us see Giving Tuesday for the amazing opportunity it is. And you can be part of it at our website and learn more about my take on our topic at my blog at contextwithlorna.com. For all of us, I'm Lorna Duick. Thanks for watching and join us next week as we explore life beyond the headlines. idea to have Giving Tuesday because like giving is always a great thing and later in life God will reward you back so I think it's a win-win. I agree with James over here but it's also a great idea because Black Friday you spend so much and you consume so much but you're you're bound to give back and you should really. With Wealth Gives and Giving Tuesday, everybody can be involved. So whether it be your own time um, or for a business, uh, giving their skills. So for example, we're providing all the online presence management for Guelph Gives to help make sure people can find it. And so anyone can give whatever skill, passion, um, or time that they have, and that will make a difference. A community is only as kind of strong as the people who are working to make it a great place. And we just feel that giving back, or you know, I personally feel that just giving back um, helps build a better community, which means we can just help people and create healthy citizens and create other people the opportunity to give back. It's not too late to send us your comments. Voicemail, email, Facebook, or Twitter. The conversation continues.